wisdom, prudentia, justice, justicia, temperance, temperantia, courage, fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast, where we explore ancient philosophy and apply it to modern life. Sometimes we have to update that philosophy because at heart, we throw out stuff that doesn't work, doesn't make sense, or has been shown to be wrong, right? We don't just take things as fact because they're old. We are philosophizing here. <laughs> and uh, I'm Steve, and I'm coming to you from my home in uh, Arkansas here, uh, where I... Uh, have a wife and a child and a dog, and and I'm trying to find a way to live the good life. And this week, I want to talk about some advice Marcus Aurelius gives to himself. Marcus is going to list what he has to do to just stop living the way he's been living, the way we all live, where we get tangled up in nonsense, we get worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, we worry about the things we said yesterday or the things we did yesterday, and we don't live now. We just waste time in this vortex of nonsense that doesn't end. There's always bad news coming in from the outside world. Our heads make it make their own bad news about the things that happened yesterday, what we said and did that we shouldn't have done, how we wasted time and then we worry about how we're going to accomplish something tomorrow or what someone's going to think about us and it just turns into this vortex where we make very little progress we're just whirled around uh like like someone stuck in a canoe on a whirlpool and we don't make progress and and we need to find a way out and that's what Marcus Aurelius is going to talk about today the meditations of Marcus Aurelius book 12, Chapter 3 You consist of three parts, your body, your breath, and your mind. The first two are yours to take care of, but the latter is properly your person. Therefore, if you abstract from the notion of yourself, that is, of your mind, whatever other people say or do, or whatever you may have said or done yourself in the past, Together with all that disturbs you, gander the consideration of its coming to pass hereafter. If you throw the necessary motions of your carcass out of the definition, and those of the vortex that whirls about you, and by this means preserve your rational faculties in an independent state of innocence, free from the allotments of fate, holding close and steady to the virtues of justice, truth, and acquiescence, if I say you, keep your mind separate and distinguished from the objects of appetite and the events of time, both past and future, and make yourself like Empedocles' world, round as a ball, in joyous rest reposing, and concern yourself to live no longer than your real life, that is, the present moment. If you do all this, you may move till death stops you, with credit and in harmony with the deity within you. Boom. Okay, so Marcus is writing to himself, kind of chastising himself and reminding himself what he needs to do. Um, I've been reading The Inner Citadel, uh, which is where I uh, ran across this this passage. I know I've read it before, uh, but uh, it kind of stuck out in the inner citadel, and I thought I'd put it on the show this week. So Marcus is talking about reminding himself of what he needs to do to live the Stoic life. It's really simple, but actually hard to implement, right? So what can we do to, to just stop being whirled around by the world, being spun around by fate, by what people say, by the regrets we have from yesterday and the fear we have of the future, and how can we do good now? Um, and what he's saying here is, first of all, he reminds himself, you you have three parts, body, breath, and mind. This is sort of how the Stoic saw the human, right? We have our bodies, we have our breath, the pneuma, kind of like the the spirit, if you will, or, or, or somehow spirit and breath are kind of the same word, um, and the mind. And, and the only one that's yours is your mind. The rest is you are entrusted with and you have to take care of, but the only one that's purely you 
is your mind uh, from the Stoic perspective, your judgments, your views of things. So he says, if you can release yourself from the from what other people say and the things you have done let it go the things you have done are out of your power the things other people say are out of your power let them go and let go of the things you're afraid will happen most of those are also not within your power now you can still plan and make good plans but we're talking about senseless worry rumination over stuff we can let that go let it go. Also, if you can let go of the impositions your body puts on you, meaning not focus, not being obsessed with food and sex and drink, you know, focus on on the mind as much as possible. We're trying to make our minds free from fate, so that no matter what happens, we can maintain a level of calm. So there's a lot said about that in Epictetus and Seneca as well. You know, we're trying to make ourselves impervious to the slings and arrows of fortune. Start doing what's right, accepting what happens, and speaking the truth. So we're not passive, but we have to accept what happens and react to it, perhaps. But we can't just sit around and say, why? Why did that happen? Why? We have to move forward. We might have to change things, but we, we don't just stew and make ourselves miserable and sit in, sit in the chair watching Netflix because we're so shook up about what's happening to act. He says, then, if you can free your mind of all this, of the future and the past, and you can live in the only life that, that you actually have, and the only life you have is now. Yesterday is dead, and tomorrow is not guaranteed. All you have is now. And if you can do this and focus on the things really in your power, then you can live, as Empedocles says, uh, you know, you, in this sphere of uh, rejoicing in perfect stillness, as it's translated in, um, in, in the, uh, the, the edition of Marcus Aurelius' Meditations, uh, translated by Gregory Hayes. And concentrate on living now. I looked up the uh, Empedocles sphere. Like, what is he talking about here? You can find it on Wikipedia. And uh, the sphere of Empedocles. Uh, Empedocles is a pre-Socratic philosopher who thought that in its original state, the universe was pure, was was pure, and in a perfect sphere. And the elements exist together in their purity and this perfect perfectness of this sphere and strife. And it, well, let me put it this way. It was permeated with love. That was kind of like the binding agent of the sphere. And on the very outer edges was strife, which guarded the extreme edges of the sphere. But then strife sunk in and started to knock the sphere apart to change it. And strife became permeated throughout. And that's what brings the world to what it is today. So the sphere of Empedocles embodies this pure existence. Uh, The Stoics often speak of the soul as being a sphere. It's this pure form of existence. It's perfect calmness. It's perfect rationality. It's unmarred by anything. And that's how they kind of view this. So he says if we can reflect on that, try to make ourselves as much uh, uh, like that as possible, then we are reaching what we what we are intended to do of course accomplishing this is not just a switch it takes time and effort and it takes doing it the right way not becoming becoming a callous jerk but not being devastated by world events not letting them permeate into you and and make you immobile you don't want to be so unplugged that you're useless in society, but you also don't want to be so impacted by everything that happens that you hold your head and moan. We might have to take action, yes, but we know that the events of the world are not typically our doing. We may ha- we may find that we have some involvement in some aspects and we want to change the way we're living in response to that. But when it comes to something happening far away, we didn't cause that. We shouldn't be devastated by that. Now, we may want to respond to it, send money somewhere or something, but we we don't take it 
deep within. So reading the inner citadel, I, I think of it like this, you know, we're like an onion. We have this outer outer level that you know, this outer le- level that picks up on things happening in the world. Uh people have uh, in in faraway lands having trouble, let's say, or people next door having trouble. That hits that, you know, that hits that outer le- level, you know about it. You see the TV commercial, you talk to your neighbor. Then the inner self is that that ruling principle, that that faculty of the mind, that that thing you might call yourself, you. Now that you knows about the outer events, but the next step uh, is up to you if you let those permeate in and then deeply affect you emotionally. Now remember, Stoics are not unemotional, but we're not going to get upset by things that aren't useful to be upset about. We will use reason instead to reply to the world. So we, it's up to us whether we let that, in, that thing that's hitting that outer shell of our, our onion of life, right? That, that our perception, are we going to let that in or are we just going to acknowledge it in a rational way? So you might, if you let the wrong things in, you let them in and you start thinking about them as if they were things under your power to control, that's going to lead you down the wrong path. But if you look at them rationally and say, okay, there are some aspects that I can act on to improve the world, or maybe there's nothing I can do, and you set it aside and you move on. It's not about being callous and rude. It's about keeping your mental calmness and responding to things rationally. And, and and responding to things like a person of reason, not a person who's just freaking out. Uh, a person drowning often drowns the person who tries to save them because they crawl on top of them and submerge them, right? Because they are totally swept up by the terror of the situation. We want to be more like the person sitting there in perfect calmness, thinking rationally about how to respond or if we should respond not being regretful over things of the past, responding in the present moment at the present time. So reflect on that sphere, that perfect sphere of calmness and rationality, and see if you can bring that sphere of perfect stillness into your life a little more fully than you have in the past. Thank you to all my patrons who support the show. Please review the show on iTunes or whatever platform you listen on uh, to help spread the word. Share on social media and uh, shoot me an email, sundaystoic at gmail.com. Until next week, have a great one. Stay sane out there. Do good in the world, but uh, don't tear yourself up in the process. Live in the now and seize the day. Carpe diem. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of The Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says, carpe diem.